Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Expat Investor Podcast. Um, my name is Tom Putris, Head of Global Partners here at Skybound Wealth Management. It's good to see everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, look, and today we're going to be reflecting on kind of some New Year's resolutions. We're going to be looking back at 2023 briefly. I don't like to look back for too long, for too often. Um, and then we're going to look forward uh, at 2024 as well in terms of what we can expect from markets, the wider picture. We're going to have another guest on. Um, after our first guest and start talking about some financial planning and keeping things in check in the household. Um, but first of all, let me let me introduce uh, a very favourite guest of mine, um, Skybound Capital's Chief Strategist, Jabir Sadawala. Jabir, thanks for joining me. Good to see you. No, my pleasure. Thanks. for. It's great to be back on here again. Um, and here we go. Another year. Here we go. Yeah, another year, another quarter. Um, yeah. Look, I don't, like I said, I don't want to dwell on the past for too long, but I think let's just have a quick look at 2023 yeah. and take me through, we always have winners and losers. So take mm. me through who were the winners and losers of 2023? Well, the standout was growth. It just okay. shot through the roof. Um, in fact, funnily enough, before coming on here, I was just reminding myself uh, what the performance figures were like, you know, for the whole mm. year as well as Q4. And growth for the year finished uh, up 37%. Wow. Now, making up growth uh, will comprise a lot of technology names. So all that talk and press about the to you know the big seven or the big 10, depending on how many you look at. Yeah, we um, keep changing their name every year. It used to be right. Fangs at one point, right? Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Even that's kind of faded a bit now. I haven't yeah. come across that acronym in a while. Um, <laughs> but in Q4... In Q4, growth uh, in that period did 13.4%. So actually, wow. if you take that out, if the year finished at the end of September, okay. you still had a very good 24-ish percent mm. from growth just for the for year. Sure. Had it, you know, had the line in the sand been drawn then, that would have mm. been pretty good, and that would have for made sure. up for the previous year. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you did really well, and I, th I think I think that surplus rally in Q4 was driven entirely, uh, to my mind, on euphoria. Okay. Uh, there were endless bets on how many rate cuts we would have. You know, right. the Fed got the ball rolling uh, with uh, three. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I stopped keeping track of the forecast after a while, <laughs> but I think the most I saw was six. Six? Year. This year. This no. Year. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay. So you, you had this I'd say. Very, yeah, just to put it mildly, <laughs> very optimistic. Um, and and for the life of me, I can't see, I can't see why that should be. I mean, you know, it, it does sort of spell out really how markets operate. It's sentiment, yeah. it's euphoria, all of that kind of stuff. Mm. Um, I think there was a relief rally as well. People desperately needed a damn good finish to the year. But you know, people forget that along the way, we've had some good economic data as well. All that okay. talk about recession disappeared. Um, suddenly it's like, no, we're going to get through. We'll be fine. Mm. And the U S led the way as, as it does many, many times. Um, um, other sort of examples. So value finished the year at 12.4%. Okay. Um, but that was rescued by Q4 where it was up nearly 10%. So take that wow. out and it was up just over 2% for the year. Amazing. So yeah, what a contrast. For sure. And Q4 I, I really was a defining moment in 2023 was. then. Yeah, 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 it really was. And I know we're going to come on to 24 in a second, but you're starting to see a reversal of that. Um, you know, so, yeah, I, I think, look, I mean, and one more that I'll always point out, because there's always a lot of grief over property. REITs finished the year up nearly 11%. But boy, okay. was that rescued in Q4, because really? in Q4 alone, that did 13.4%. So wow. So in September, up, it would have been a bad year then. It would have been a bad year for REITs. Yeah. Jeez. Okay. Probably not was, as bad as people thought, but still yeah. bad. And who was, uh, in terms of style and asset classes, who was a loser in 2023? Um, but So that was definitely one of them. If I look at, for instance, oh, uh, it's worth mentioning small cap as an example. That was down. Uh, sorry, beg your pardon. That was up 16% for the year. Um, mm -hmm. But over Q4, it jumped 12.6%. 
So Jeez. for the year, really, otherwise it was, you know, we're looking at, yeah. um, we're looking at about four ish percent. Yeah. Um, if you look at markets in general, uh, Japan did spectacularly well in, in yen terms. Okay. Um, uh, and that wasn't aided much by Q4. Q4 it was only up, topics was only up 2%. Right. But for the year, topics finished up 28%. Okay. So big question mark for this year is, has that still got legs? Yeah. That's yeah. the big one. Um, in contrast but, yeah. to 2022, though, I think one of the well, one of the only winners we had in 2022 was commodities. How yeah. did commodities fare in 2023 in comparison? Yeah, so I mean, you know, overall, if you look at, let me see, yeah, here we go. So this is a this is a great one. So commodity for the year as a whole finished down eight percent. Wow. Okay. But Q4 it was down just over four and a half. Amazing. So you got quite a contrast. And, uh, and was Q4 all about this interest rate hike? Um, was there anything else happening in Q4 that that compounded that euphoria, or was it just this relief and getting towards of the the light at the end of the tunnel, as so many people put it? I think relief was a very big factor. So I think mm. it was really the the realization in investors' minds that uh, finally we're going to get those rate cuts. You know, we can start yeah. to see this these rates come down. I mean, you know, those those commodity figures um, that was on the back of energy inflation, um, okay. and so people thought, great, uh, you know, energy energy inflation dictates uh, headline inflation. Uh, which in turn sure. dictates interest rates. They simplified it too much. That was the problem. Really? And I think that's been part of the problem for last year. I don't think we've had the full awakening yet. It might play out this year that interest rates are not just determined by inflation. Okay. There are so many other factors. There are technicals, you know, for instance, debt issuance, huge mm. thing. And at what point on the curve do you issue that debt? Do you do it the short term, the mid or the long end? Yeah, and then there's yeah. demographics. People need income. So yeah. there's all of that that comes into play. There are so many different factors. Mm -hmm. um, but and then to a lesser extent, um, you know, you had obviously the geopolitical flare up uh, with Israel, Gaza. Sure. But I think there was a belief that that will be contained and probably over with fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. um, you had that uh, hostage negotiation that went on for a short while. Um, and initially, from the way Israel went in, you know, it was almost like a repeat film that, uh, OK, yeah. we're going to see a big resolution here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm afraid many factors there are not going to plan. You know, so, yeah. Uh, no. yeah. Look, I mean, I'm coming into 2024 <clears throat> feeling pretty good, feeling fairly confident. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. liking valuations right now, personally, in my own portfolio, as well as looking at clients. Yeah. Um, but from your point of view, does it is it continuing to look positive? I mean, what what what's kind of shaping the landscape out there at the moment? Okay, so last year I would have put the probability of a recession, and you know I I, I wrote about it many times in the weeklies that I just couldn't see a recession coming, and you okay. had this sort of change that took place, and people said no, no recession. Mm. Um, if I had to put a number on it, I would have said less than five percent chance of a recession. This wow. year, that number has gone up for me, but overall, I still I still want to be long the market. Okay. The question really is, how do you want to be long? Um, mm. How much would I put on a probability of a recession? I'm afraid it's definitely jumped into double uh, double digits. Uh, wow. At the moment, I'm sitting on around 15 to 20 percent. OK, now that's a big increase. It's a big right. increase, but yeah, you're still sure. looking at 75 to 80 percent that, you know, we will come through the year. Um, I don't, uh, for, for reasons like valuation, I'm I'm fairly, I'm fairly bullish on the market, um, okay. as in buy the dips, you know, great entry point, all of that. You mm. haven't got that much to lose, so that's a promising sign. Yeah. Um, my worry, as I as I sort of started off with in my weekly, the first one for this year, are around three things. One is this whole geopolitical risk. Right. Now, that really worries me. I don't think people are evaluating this properly. Um, when you look at, first of all, how it's spread to other countries mm. before it was confined to just Israel, Gaza. Now, you know, you've got the Houthis who are like mosquitoes flying around uh, the, the heads of, you know, naval uh, personnel yeah. and cargo yeah. personnel. Um, they are causing a lot of a lot of mayhem. 
Mm. Um, and that's going to have an impact, I believe, on the second factor, which is inflation. Okay. Um, because the um, cost of that. What links those two, those then? Uh, well, insurance premiums are going through the roof as a right. start. And secondly, ships are now, many, many ships are now having to take the long route around the Cape um, okay. because that whole Red Sea area leading into the, you know, the Iranian Straits, it's yeah. it's a deadly zone. And uh, mm. I know the US, UK strikes have been aimed at trying to push them back, but I'm afraid, I, you know, it hasn't worked to my mind. No. Um, so ships are going to get diverted europe could be the main one to suffer on this which is a real shame because i was actually starting to look very bullish on europe i still yeah. am just a mm. bit less they get mm. a lot of their uh, uh imports from asia through the suez canal and that right. whole region yeah um i think the other factor here is that if uh, god forbid if it does start to go further afield then this is it's got to attack uh and affect the whole energy complex which okay. means energy prices have to go up if that happens we're back to a repeat story aren't we you know, headline <laughs> yeah, back to that effect. inflation Correct. jargon again yeah okay. now it's still too soon to tell we had the first u.s uh, inflation print um which showed a slight uptick and it was largely you know um uh, around funnily enough the core elements housing especially yeah and people are now saying well housing is settled down well if it's settled down and it's going up at roughly half a percent a month then that's not good news. No. Right? So that's core inflation, which is the one that the Fed pays most attention to. If on top of that, you do get a rise in uh, energy inflation steadily, mm. then that starts to knock on to food prices because, you know, food production and processing is all linked to energy as well, not yeah. just weather. So um, th it is a worry. We've got to get that situation under control. And I think interestingly, being, uh, in yeah. December, you saw that that core inflation came up, but... PPI was coming, was still coming down. So right. yeah. it was a nice balance. And I think that's where heads still remain quite steady. And throughout January now, we've certainly had a bit of volatility in January, but markets again are continuing to pick up. But yeah. as soon as those two factors come together in the same direction on a downward trajectory, then that's that's what you're talking about here, which is then yeah. the government's going to come back to this whole debate on what we do with interest rates. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, you've got technicals as well that also mm -hmm. impact uh, yields. I mean, inflation, of course, impacts yields, but you've got others. I mean, the U.S. has a huge debt issuance calendar this year. It's massive. Really? Um, and the big question mark is how do they fund that? Do they do that in the, you know, do they go at the lower end, the lower term end? Or do they move more to the belly of the curve, the five to seven year uh, level? Um, it's, it's, it's going to distort the yield curve. Okay. And, you know, last year we had endless talk about yield curve, didn't we? It was in and out. Um, yeah. So what's it going to do? And that, that's why, you know, an inverted yield curve never always necessarily spells recession. Um, okay. it, is, it is a fact that every recession has been preceded by mm. an inverted yield curve. But I'm afraid the opposite is simply not true. So right. that's what we've got to be very mindful of. And that's why I'm so wary of markets when they start to make these these uh, deductions, you know, yeah. oh, we've got this. It's easy to paint a that. picture when you're only looking at a narrow data set, right? Um, exactly. yeah. And you kind of expand out the, the true yeah. truth comes to light. Um, I mean, it, for all intents and purposes, it's busy. <laughs> um, yeah. A lot going on. And I think the other thing to consider this year is, um, a big one for me is is elections. Elections, yeah, exactly. Um, um, and it's I not tried. just the US, is it? <laughs> no, um, no, it's already underway. We've had the Taiwanese one. Um, the Taiwanese one on the surface uh, gives everybody a little bit of room for comfort. The Chinese are happy uh, because okay, the incumbents, brilliant. you know, are um, uh, didn't do that well. I, right. I think that's a warning sign for the incumbents. The only reason they lost, uh, they won, sorry, is because the opposition, the two main opposition parties, who between them actually took 60% of the vote, but they couldn't unite. They couldn't come to a unification on policy. Really? Just before the election. Wow. Now, had they managed to do that, we would have had a different government in, in, in charge in Taiwan. Okay. So that's a bit of a frustration for the Chinese. It's obviously good for the Americans. Yeah. Uh, and it's good for the Taiwanese guys, but they need to pull their socks up because mm. they need to address the concerns. So that's number one ticked off. Um, we've got a spate of European elections coming up and the ones to be cognizant of are the likes of Portugal, uh, Germany, you know, where in all these countries, the far right are doing better and better. 
So really? will they continue their their uh, march, so to speak? Mm. Yeah. Um, it carries on pretty much throughout the India. There's an election, but that looks pretty much like a given. Of course, there's Russia. We know he's going to win that already. We don't need to <laughs> take bets on that. Yeah. But then, as you said, yeah, I mean, uh, we've got the big one, the really big one in November. And right. that's going to be decisive. Um, yeah. And on paper right now, it does look like Mr. Trump is going to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, wow, right. Uh, one for the one for the history books, this will be. But um, typically, though, Jabir, in the US, election years have always been pretty positive when you look from the start to the finish of yeah. the year. I mean. I think when I was looking at the data, it was kind of May was always a the worst point in the year historically. Um, and it was kind of sell in May, go away, come back in September. Um, but what's your thoughts? Is that do you, do you still feel that to be true or is this recession or the possibility of recession going to dampen that spirit in the market? Um, so I came across a headline. Um, so uh, True story, right? I mean, when Trump first won, which is what is going back eight years ago or so, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, I remember thinking then that, right, bond yields are going to fly and right. uh, you want to be very, very cautious then. Um, and initially, that was the view of the market. I stayed out all night, remember, uh, watching the election and I, okay. thought, right, I was feeling very smug. Um, right. And then within like 48 hours, suddenly everything turned. Because mm. markets, you know, Trump had given a very uh, warm speech, acceptance speech and all this stuff. Um, and suddenly there was this massive U-turn and yeah. markets rallied, yields came down and so on. The fears in the markets right now is that if Trump should win, you're going to see a big rally in bond yields. That's the really? talk right now. Yeah. Um, and if that plays out, you're going to that, that will take its toll on uh, on markets. Because you yeah. know the whole the whole earnings scenario uh, scene will get discounted. Yeah. So it's something to watch out for. Um, there are pros and cons with Trump. I think for me the biggest con, uh, negative, is the fact that you know he is extremely, very very pro-Israeli. Mm. Now it affects strategy. If you work backwards, let's start with the assumption that Trump wins, and you're sitting in Tel Aviv, right? You're trying to figure out how to play this game. Mm. You'll be saying to yourself, God, you know, I need to hang in there as long as I can. Yeah. So how do I stretch this whole saga out? Sure. Um, and bearing in mind that um, uh, other uh, other regimes like Hezbollah, for instance, haven't even fully got involved in this war. Um, if they no. do, it's going to get nasty. So yeah. you have this potentially ugly scene. You know, I, I can't see unless between now and then we can come up with some sort of uh, settlement in Israel. Mm. I, I struggle to see how that can happen. So it no, is I a really big one to watch. Yeah, yeah. It's a very big yeah. one to watch. With everything that's going on, then, how is how is this? I say it's not noise. How are these factors um, changing your view of asset allocation today? Portfolio <laughs> makeups, for example, you know, are you looking <laughs> to make changes? Have you got? You know, are you looking at geographical changes, fixed income changes? You know, we've spoken about the issuance of debt and whether it be short, medium or long. Um, certainly short term debt's been a nice place to be for the last couple of months, right, where these interest rates have been where they've been and the yields have been there on that short term basis. And certainly long terms um, certainly dropped off. Are you looking at changing how you view asset allocation as a result of what's going on? Or is it kind of, no, we still believe in the fundamentals and we'll work through this. Yeah. So we actually went through all the model portfolios again, as we do, as if we're starting from a blank sheet of paper. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And overall, we're very, we're still very happy with the construction. Um, yeah. The construction is that, first of all, remain directional. That's key. Um, because when you're looking at 75, 80% um, growth, you know, non-recession outlook, you don't mm. want to be sitting on the fence. Sure. And you definitely don't want to be out of the market. So remain long on the equity scene, stick with good, high quality companies, mm. perhaps of a defensive leaning, but where they do have earnings power, because that's who the market is going to continue to reward. I okay. don't think they've had the full benefit of that yet. Um, right. Look at the value performance, for instance, last year. That's yeah. a reflection of that. I think it's been yeah. completely forgotten. So I think you'll see some there. If I'm right about inflation, you need that protection because these are the sure. guys who can pass off the cost to the consumer. 
So yes. you need that, right? So that's your, on an inflation adjusted basis, your earnings will stay right up there. Okay. Um, so that's a generalization on the equity side. On the bond side, we remain short duration very right. much short duration. I'm loath. We had this, uh, the, in, the internal team had a discussion on, um, and I think, I think actually, um, uh, Paul might've raised this as well, um, mm. in terms of what do you do with bond duration? It's a very valid question. Yeah. Um, do you start going longer duration to capture those higher yields? And our view was no, just, just, just be patient Yeah. because, the odds are that interest rates will still come down uh, as opposed to go up. I don't see inflation right. surging ahead that rates will have to go up. Yeah. There are too many risks out there. But on, you know, if, if we're right that they come down, that will benefit the short duration. If you look at the yields on that, you're still getting short duration products of around, mm. you know, give or take 5%. That's yeah. very attractive. For sure. Um, with far less sensitivity to interest rates. Mm. Um we do, that said, we do have some exposure to the cheap markets, uh, yeah. going to your point earlier about valuations. Uh, Europe and EM are incredibly cheap. You know, right. Now, we know cheap can get cheaper. I appreciate that. Sure. But I just believe it'll be less cheap. So okay. it's, a, it's a similar story to last year. We think we're uh, defensively positioned to capture the upside. If for any reason markets go gung-ho, Mm. We won't capture that full upside, not with a right. defensive, in which case yeah. we'll have to review it at some point during the year if we think Makes it's sense. sustainable. But at the moment, yeah. I don't see that happening. Interesting. Um, lots going on, Jabir. It's been great to have you along. As always, thank you for your time. I know how busy you are. So it's a, it is a special mention for taking the time out to speak to me today. And um, we look forward to having you on again. We'll come to the end of Q1 and hopefully have a review of what's going on so cool. far. I know we're yeah. already towards the end of, of January, but hopefully our listeners can certainly see more regular updates throughout the year from, from yourself. Perfect. Thanks a lot. My pleasure. Yeah, it's been Jabir, good, good to see here. you. Thanks thank ever you. so much. Financial planning is like constructing a house and like any successful project, we need a solid foundation. Today, we're going to be exploring some of the steps that need to be laid out in a financial plan. My second guest today is a good friend of mine, someone who's been on the podcast previously, um, the one and only Paul Butler. Hi, Tom. How, How are you doing? Going, buddy? Good yeah, to see I'm you. Yeah, really well, thank you. Really well. How's 2024 treating you so far? Uh, busy. Yeah. 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 Busy. Lots of lots of stuff to do. Lots of moving parts everywhere. Um, and uh, yeah. Yeah. Just trying to make sure people are happy and people know what they're doing. Yeah. yeah. For sure. well, yeah look, we're yeah. heading towards the end of January and yep. no doubt there's probably a few people out there today that have uh, made some resolutions <laughs> and have got to the end of January or heading heading towards the end of January may not still have those resolutions. Yeah. In place. Um, mm. And Last year, I actually, I think I renamed um, New Year's resolutions last year as like good intentions or New Year intentions, right? Yeah. Um, yep. And I think it's always a time, you know, I think it's always a time when people look to reflect. And I think intentions or resolutions are a bit like financial planning, right? It's yeah. when you stop, you analyze what's going on in your life, and then you decide to make a change for the better and how long that lasts is you know, yet to be seen, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, look, let's 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 dive into this concept of planning on purpose because that's what you, that's how you see financial planning today, right? You're no stranger to being in front of the camera and and speaking <laughs> to people and gosh, and yeah. I know you do a lot for uh, corporates around the UAE, Paul. Yep. Where, um, yeah. You get the opportunity to come sit and do do uh, seminars and webinars for, mm. for many companies across the UAE. Yep. What is it that you're covering off in, in those types of things? Because I know that kind of the, the topic behind that is planning on purpose, right? And so, yeah. so what are you talking about when, when you get the opportunity to, well, to have I, I think I think for me, the, 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 first, the first thing I, I do is a sort of introduction, if you like. Yeah. Um, my kickoff session with a lot of the corporates is, I call it a money workout. Right, okay. And it's like... Yeah, it's literally five steps that you can take to mm. start getting some clarity and instilling the process yeah. and instilling the rituals that you need and habits that you need in order to, you know, start getting some control yeah. and ultimately getting a really good relationship with your money, okay. right? So, you know, number one and number two is, is nasty stuff like, well, let's do an audit 
Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, let's understand what's going out. Yeah. You know, is there stuff that is still fit for purpose? Could there be some investments, some insurances, some, you know, everybody's seen it on the credit card. Oh, yeah, join for a year. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, then the year passes and you get this huge subscription fee. And it's like, well, is that so worth it? Credit cards, they're a nightmare for yeah, that, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know? Um, so if you're listening out there, check your credit card bill because there's a line <laughs> item on there somewhere that says yeah. insurance. And it and probably, it's, yeah. It's extortionate yeah. and potentially not applicable and doesn't serve the right purpose. Yeah. You know, are these, and, and that's, the, that's the point of doing an audit, right? I yeah. mean, a client of mine was saying, he said, and I use this example in, in the sessions, and that is, you know, clients said to me, well, I keep running out of money in the UK. Right. And I don't understand why. And I said, well, have you looked? Yeah. No. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, let's do an audit. Get a bank statement. Let's do an audit yeah. and understand what's going on. And um, it didn't take him long to realise that his uh, fruit-based uh, device was uh, attached to his UK oh, right. account, and um, his kids were on the same ID. Yeah. Three hundred pound a month. Wow. In subscriptions to apps he didn't even know he had. Yeah. Let alone used. Subscription so, is dangerous though, because I'm, yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I'm guilty of that. Yeah, we all are. We all right, sign up to the free it. trial and free forget trial, to... Seven days later, it's gone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they don't but, send you that email. No, <laughs> no, they, they neglect to send that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the, that's, that's sort of step one. And, and it's about getting rid of what you've already got, yeah. you know, or getting rid of the chaff, if you like, mm, you know, mm. and, and if there's stuff that you don't, you, you know, that's not fit for purpose, get rid of it. Yeah. Because guess what? It's going to give you more money. Yeah. Right. It's going to it's going to reduce that stress a little bit, right? Because yeah. a, a lot of it is based for me around the wellness side of things. You know that f that feeling of being healthy and happy, mm. right? What does that mean? Well, from a financial perspective, do not be in control. Yeah. Understand what's going out. Yeah. Right. Then once you've done a good audit, you get rid of what you don't need. Then we move into a doing a budget. Right. All right. What's going out when? Okay, everyone's, you've heard of the jam jars or the envelopes, right? I yeah. talk about people getting their envelopes in order. Okay, yeah. so, you know, we've got rent, we've got car, we've got insurance, we've got investment, we've got etc., uh, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Get your envelopes in order and, and know that you've got enough in each one for when it needs paying yeah. by when, you know? My that analogy always makes me laugh because I remember when I first came to the UAE, that is literally what we did. We, you, you know, our banking wasn't all that great here at the time, and my wife was, you know, working, and we, she was, uh, she was in the restaurant industry and a big, you know, big part of yeah. the tips and stuff. And right. it was like, right, let's put cash into this envelope, and that pays the rent. Let's put cash into this envelope, and that's for the food. And yeah, you know, like yeah, it's, it's real, right? Yeah, it's yeah, really, yeah, absolutely. Really, you know, yeah, we were very young, but yeah, you know, at the time. No, it's and it's and it's you know, it's it's a tried and tested thing. Yeah. I got I got it from my granddad and grand, my nan. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what mm -hmm. she did. Yeah, every week my granddad used to walk in with a brown envelope. She used to nick it off him and uh, <laughs> divvy it up into the divvy it up into the yeah, envelopes, yeah. and whatever was left, he would go out and spend over the weekend. But yeah. that that you know that was do you have some general rules of thumb when it comes to budgeting like as a whole big picture? yeah i mean look you know there's 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 a a commonly used theme which is sort of you know 50 percent to stuff you need okay right essentials you yeah. need to live yeah. rent food that's 50 percent of your income okay yeah yeah, yeah. um 30 percent for you know things like leisure and your wants your wants yeah yeah and then sort of twenty percent towards your savings. Okay. Okay. Um, as a as a general rule of thumb, that's a nice a nice place that's to start. Yeah, yeah. However, what I would stress to people is that don't look at twenty percent and go right. Okay, brilliant. I'm saving twenty percent. Yeah. Because if you don't know what your numbers are, mm. right, over the long term, you could be saving twenty percent and then get towards the end and go oh that was not nearly enough. Yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, by working with a professional money coach, financial advisor, mm. whatever you want to, whoever you want, that you can get what that number is yeah. and understand rather what, rather than the percentage, understand what the number is. Mm. Okay. And then look to work towards that number over time with pay rises, bonuses, yeah. promotions, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, but as a start, yeah. So you've done the kind of budgeting, you've done the, the audit. Yep. I mean, what's next? Topic well, wise? if you've done a good budget, you've got, done a good audit, 
you you've got visibility on most things now all of yeah. a sudden right you know when what's going out by when you've got rid of stuff you don't need you're saving some money here and there on unnecessary stuff mm. right mm. um then that sort of for me that that that's designed to give you some headspace right right give you some bandwidth yeah. to actually look at the serious things and the more important things like planning mm. right that's step three yeah. is to look at the planning look at the bigger picture yeah okay we all love our fun coupons right <laughs> yeah. we've yeah. got to have our fun coupons yeah. and we, we you know and, and we're going to have some nice stuff out of that but you know by knowing your numbers you're then going to be in a situation where if you do get that promotion you're not going to have that lifestyle creep necessarily mm. that um a lot of people get oh i've had a i've had a pay rise mm. excellent so I can go out and buy, you business know. Business classic is, is now yeah, 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 yeah. The amount of people that live in business class lives that yeah. should actually be an economy, you know. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, that is, you know, that's, that's, that's the next thing is to really understand what those key points are right. in your life mm. that are really important to yeah. you and asking yourself the question, well, or asking yourself the question, put it like this, is what if I couldn't, Buy the house I always wanted. Yeah. What if I couldn't buy my partner the present she always wanted? What if I sure. couldn't send my kids to university? What if I was still in debt in ten years' time? What yeah. if I didn't have the choice but to carry on working? Yeah. Or flip it around and say, what if I did achieve all of that? Mm. Mm. Okay. Right. Understand what you you know. Get a bit of a why about that. Yeah. Attach some emotions yeah. to to whatever it is that's that's coming because they are coming. So that planning process is then putting together that system to place in place, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then it's you know it's putting those rituals and habits and you know and but but you know putting that in place so that you're you know you you're constantly in in touch with what the end game is. Yeah. Yeah, but sticking to the process. Right, okay. Yeah. Um because step 4 is automate. Okay. Right. Okay. So like that, So That's okay. So if you're Paying off your debt, mm. set the budget, automate it. Okay. Out your bank account each month, no excuses. It's Direct gone. debit, yep. whatever it is. Make yep. it automatic. Absolutely. Okay. If you're saving for your retirement, set the budget, automate it. Don't yeah. give yourself a choice yeah, yeah. at the end of each month. Say, oh, do you know to what? Do not do it. I'll, I'll do a little bit less this because I've got, and I just want to. Kelly's birthday next week. Yeah. yeah. No. None of that. <laughs> yeah. No. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, ask ask people the question. You know, do you spend, <clears throat> pay bills, mm. spend a bit more, save what's left, mm. or do you save first, pay bills, yeah. and then maybe spend what's left? Right. Yeah. What's going to give you more peace of mind? You've sure. already put something aside for yourself, future you. Mm. Really, really, I cannot stress how important future you is going to love you for that. It's um, weird, isn't it? Like when you think of that, because you look back now and you go, oh, I wish I wish I knew what I knew now back then. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we just apply that? We always apply that backwards. Yeah. We always do that backwards. We yeah. Don't do yeah. That forwards. No. Absolutely. Um, no, it's a good point. I think. Yeah. So, so what's so step five then? So you've automated. So you've got. You've got all step this stuff five. Going. Yeah. Step. So we've had a by this stage really good workout. Lots yeah. of sweat. Lots of calories done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then it's about reviewing. All good plans need reviewing. Okay. Right. And so that goes back to that accountability. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So you know, I I I'd say it as half a joke, but. I say to people, you know, set up a date night with your money each month. Really? Go on a date night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Okay. Interesting. Concept. You know, um, I think especially as we're expats, mm. right, you know, everybody goes, everybody thinks that this, your money's going to go that much further because mm. you're getting that much more pay in your pocket yeah. and so on and so forth. But, you know, it's very, very easy to spend your money here. Um, well, you're just gross at the end of the day, right? If yeah. you're in a tax-free environment like the UAE, like we are here. You're just on a gross basis, so it's now just down to you to make those decisions exactly. rather than anybody else. Yeah, I mean, in 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 many other jurisdictions, that's it's almost done for you. Yeah, right. You know, in the UK, you, you're paying into a pension. You've yeah. got the state pension with the national insurance. You've got your 401k in the US. You've yeah. got your superannuation in the in Australia. So a lot of that is done for you. It's automatically done mm. for you mm. via taxes or you know incentives to not pay as much tax yeah. for example yeah. whereas that's not here today yeah. right that's not right now in the UAE that's not here we've got gratuity mm. but it doesn't really work in the same way because when you leave it becomes part of your yeah. final package so yeah. that get tends to get swallowed up with 
you know, vacation, pay the car out, yeah. go on a nice holiday, or and it's whatever dead money it might at the end of the day, right? It's not growing, it's not doing no, anything. Absolutely, okay, it's accumulating year by year. But you know, people often don't stay in the same job for the entire time. You know, you do two years, so you're exactly. not getting massive payouts. There's a little bump when you change jobs. It's kind of a nothing. Uh, exactly right. Point. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, and it's a, and it's about reviewing that. You know, I, I I keep going back to this sort of gym analogy or working out yeah. analogy, right? If you did the same workout day in day out yeah okay you'd see some some improvements initially yeah right but then after a while you sort of plateau and you start going backwards yeah, going again back probably way, yeah. right yeah. so when i sit down with a client it's about doing a workout with them and putting that little increment in there yeah that, making it a little bit harder every time yeah making it a little bit harder yeah. every time mm. so that you know by a year down the road or three years down the line and we've gone from here to up here mm. without even realizing it yeah. and that's what you know getting fit Mm. is all about that's what getting fit with your money is all about yeah, right so keep sense. reviewing that keep putting that little increment in and you know bizarrely because it's a bit dull what we do let's be honest it can be yeah <laughs> no one wants to talk about finances that's the no problem, right? no 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 and nobody wants it. to talk about you know what if i die what if i lose yeah. my job what if i get really ill yeah okay what is gonna what are the what's gonna happen there mm -hmm. right how, how making risk management fun how do you do yeah that? what are those what are the stress tests you need to yeah. do to get that you know get those things boxed off you know because mm -hmm. that's you know so review definitely so yeah. audit budget plan automate review that's the five-step workout that I, d I, I do with with the corporates which Perfect. which seems to be you know that's it, it's a good starting point Fantastic. and then we move on to you know what are you where are you vulnerable mm, mm. right yeah you know what about you know lack of a will right if mm. you haven't got a will everyone needs a will yeah, yeah. right but if you haven't got one that's going to cause chaos yeah, potentially, yeah. right? Yeah. You could have bank accounts here, you could have investment accounts over in the Isle of Man, you could have all sorts Whatever. of stuff, yeah. and all of a sudden it's a mess, right? But a will. And you're is... wrapping that up in that review process as you go through. Absolutely right. right. Yeah, yeah, Imagine. yeah. You know, what about a health and life crisis? Mm -hmm. Well, what's like going to happen? Earlier, it was, you know, kind of planning for those life transitions, right? And any one yeah. of them can, can come up at any time. Absolutely, so, um, yeah. Paul, look, time flies when you're having fun. Um, <laughs> it does. It's been great Talk all day having about you on, on the podcast today. And um, I hope many of your listeners out there have, have probably heard something in today and, and taken it on board, you know? And we hope so. Sometimes, it, like you say, it's not fun, but I think it's relatable at this point. Um, so, you know, look, uh, thank you for coming. Absolutely. Come pleasure. on again, see me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll yeah. Try and stop me. Year. That'd be good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Um, look for anyone who's looking to to build some accountability into their financial plan this year. Please do feel free to reach out to Paul or any one of the team here at Skybound. Um, it's been great to have you along today, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.